So one of the best places to learn about portrait photography and photographing people is to work with your friends or family. So this is why today, this whole video, we've come outdoors and we're gonna have a look at how to try and pose people who aren't models. So the idea of working with a professional model or a semi-professional model can seem kind of quite scary with the fact that they'd know what to do in their role. But if you're a new photographer, there's probably a lot of undue pressure put on yourself um, to kind of help them direct a little bit and you may feel a little bit inadequate. So this is why we'd say in working in portrait photography, the best place to start is like with friends or family. So if you get hold of somebody who's willing to kind of be a bit of a muse for you for a little while, we're going to give some really useful tips on how to pose and how to communicate and direct that person when they've never done any modeling before. So the best place we'd say to begin is to do some research. So places like Pinterest are really, really good. And by that chance, we have actually got loads of Pinterest boards on eye photography. So do check us out. We'll put the link in the description for that because we may have some ideas in there that are really help you out to begin with. But definitely do some research, find some photographs that you like the look of, you know, think about how you're actually gonna do your photo shoot. Are you gonna do it indoors? outdoors, daytime, nighttime? Is it gonna be out in a public location, somewhere a bit more private? And try and kind of get some ideas that would seem practical to try in that, in, in that instance. Um, if you just kind of download them to your phone, it's easy for you then to take around. And once you've found your friends, once you've got somebody who's willing to uh, be a model for you, then just send out those pictures, just give them a bit of an idea as to what you want to try and kind of capture. Hopefully it gives them an idea of what you're expecting from them. And it also gives them an idea as to what they could kind of wear in terms of like a bit of a wardrobe. Because the last thing you want to do is suggest an idea of wearing a bit of a bikini in the middle of December. It's not a good idea. So let's move on to talk about the pose thing. Now this, it's really simple. If you keep your phone with you and got the example images that you've downloaded, just show them to your friend. And if you work through them one by one, it does make it a lot more methodical and a lot easier. But we have got a few tips that'll make it again, a bit more relaxing for them. So the first tip is to give them some sort of object or surface to lean on. It's an awkward feeling just to stand still like I am now in like the middle of a field. It's not that most comfortable thing for someone who's not used to it. So if you can give them some sort of surface, whether it be a tree or a fence or a wall, just to lean their bodies against, it'll naturally help the body relax and slouch a little bit. So tip two would be to give them something to focus on. So not the camera, that is probably one of the more scariest things for a, a non-model to focus on because they're just gonna get absolute freeze frame and they're not gonna smile or anything like that. So tip two is really to kind of get an object to focus on. So if we were around here, I'd just say like the river or the walls or the trees over that side, something to distract them. It doesn't matter that they're not looking at the camera. All you need to do is get them to relax to begin with and then we can go into more advanced shots a little bit later on. So tip three, for the first few shots, don't worry about your friend's expression. Don't worry if they're smiling, they're grimacing, they're, they look a little bit awkward. Again, this is all trying to just get them to relax to begin with. So if they're looking off in the distance and they've got a bit of a straight face, it's fine. Okay, so tip four would be not to go silent on your on your model. So when you're kind of shooting, still keep talking to them. The, the worst thing is that kind of awkward silence. They don't know, are they kind of doing the right thing or anything like that? So you've got to give them kind of constant reassurance and a bit of praise and even show them some of the shots in the back of the camera, the ones that you're really proud of. So when you feel a little bit more confident of going kind of off the reference pictures, you can start to adapt those shots a little bit more. So say it was just somebody sat down, you know, you could kind of suggest to your friend, how about maybe kind of moving their hand position. So you start to kind of develop those pictures a little bit more. And this is how you as a photographer gets a little bit more comfortable. So kind of just show them, even kind of sit in their position and just show them what you want to do. You know, visual communication in that way is so much quicker than verbal communication. So if they they can actually see what you're expecting of them it'll be dead simple to try out it's worthwhile trying to mix up your shots a little bit don't just take the same position and, and take the same picture over and over again try different lengths of shots so you go from like a full length to like a three-quarter length mid length head and shoulders high angles low angles even add in a few dutch tilts as well 
So if you've got someone who's kind of quite nervous in front of the camera, there's a couple of little things you can do to kind of distract them from it. Um, adding props is a really simple tool. Now you don't need to go to the length of kind of going for like a, a full prop shop and, and bring in lots of different bits and pieces because that again can kind of overwhelm somebody if they don't know what to do. Just get something that's kind of natural to them. For a lot of people now, it's just grabbing your phone. So even if it's a case that they're just stood there playing with their phone, looking down towards it, it's fine. They're concentrating on something else you can concentrate on the photograph and nobody's really worrying. So that's one little kind of tool that you can use for a prop. It's also worth thinking about what your friend does with their hands and their legs in the shots as well. That may sound really weird, but having your hands just straight down by the side creates a very angular shape on your shoulders, which looks really uncomfortable. So we'd kind of say maybe to either kind of pop the hands in the pockets, hands behind the back, arms crossed. If they're sat down, get them to bring their legs, their knees up towards their body. It just gives their hands some sort of purpose. Otherwise it's going to again, make them feel a little bit more awkward about what to do and where to position themselves. And that's it really. Those are the main points to remember. It's all about distracting them from the camera to begin with before they and you feel a little bit more confident. So again, just remember to, to research a few ideas, show them what you're trying to do, whether that's on your phone or actually kind of take the pose yourself and demonstrate it before they try it out. See if you can kind of distract them away from the camera, whether it's using props or a little bit of conversation, but, but hopefully it helps to some manner anyway. You know, if you are taking portraits for the first time, you know, send us some of your shots. If you're an iPhotography student, we'd love to see them in the gallery. So you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and, and everywhere else on social media if you want to send us some of your shots. If you've got any other questions, any other suggestions, any of the tips that we've not mentioned that you found really, really useful when taking photographs of your friends, then again, drop them in the comments below or we'll love to hear from you. So hit the subscribe button and the notification button if you want to see more. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's really good fun making them and it's lovely to hear how many people uh, have kind of grown and found so much information from the videos we've produced so it's really heartwarming to know.